Welcome Spartans to another Halo Book Club episode, part of Podcast Evolved, your home for Halo. I am your host, Aaron, and with me today we've got David. Hello everybody. And we've got no one else. Nobody bothered. Those lazy jerks. So you're going to have to make do with just the pair of us today. But it's okay because it's a super short book. It is, yes. It's one of our short stories again. If you're joining us this week, we are covering the Halo Evolution short story, Blunt Instruments. If that's ringing a bell and you haven't read it in a while, that is the Black Team story from Evolutions. It is the good Black Team story. (laughs) Yes, we will talk about this in a minute because I was surprised by that. Because Black Team in my head only summon one thought, and we will go over that momentarily. But before I start a rant, we will jump into the socials. So... If you're new to the show, welcome to Podcast Evolved. We host a variety of shows. This is the book club, where we cover all the novels, short stories, and comics in the Halo universe. We also have Podcast Evolved, the main show, which you hear regularly, Mission Debrief, and Builds with Blocks. Also, we now have a partnership with HCS Pro Talk, where Josh and Will keep us up to date on what's happening in the competitive world of Halo. If you are in any way inclined in that and you want someone knowledgeable, Josh and Will are your people to go to. You don't want me and David to tell you about the competitive Halo scene. I can barely play a competitive anything anymore these days. Do yourselves a favour and jump over to that. You will also notice they now do a section in our live show every month as well. So you can go and listen out for that. If you would like to learn more about all of our shows, you can go and visit the website halopodcastevolve.com and you can find details and links to all of our stuff. And if you're already a fan of the show, we would really appreciate it if you would leave us a review on your podcast service of choice. More reviews and share the episode if there's a Halo fan in your life that you haven't already told about. Or just make a new Halo fan. Yes, you can corrupt a new person to become a Halo fan. That's always appreciated. We can never have too many Halo fans and fresh blood is always good. And finally, we would like to take a little minute to thank all of our patrons. You guys have helped us do a lot of crazy shit lately and we just can't get over the constant support that everyone's given us the whole way through this. So honestly, thank you very much. Thank you all, guys. If you would like to become a patron and help support the show, you can go over to patreon.com forward slash Halo Podcast Evolved and there you will get details on all of the rewards we offer to patrons, including access to early episodes, unique swag, and our soundtrack, which features 18 songs that were specially made just for us. You will have heard one of those at the start of this show. And finally, if you were looking for a different way to help support the show, you can go over to Audible and sign up for a trial today at audibletrial.com forward slash podcast evolved and you will get yourself a free trial for an audiobook and you will help support us. So go do that and then, let's see, Halo Book Recommendation, I'm going to say Halo Evolutions, go for that. It's a good one, but you will get to listen to Jen Taylor. Oh yeah. Yeah, if you get Halo Evolutions, you can listen to it in Unaudible, narrated by Steve Downs, Holter Graham, Frank O'Connor, and Jen Taylor. I know those people. Yeah, they've got like the full set. It's quite good. They got Jen to do too. She did that, and she did Contact Harvest as well, so they're both worth a a listen to. They're very good stories. Hmm. Right, David, you're going to take us through the details of this, and then we're going to talk about it, so... I will indeed, so... Our little book that we have here today is called Blunt Instruments, authored by Fred Van Lent. Uh, Van Lente? It's a short little book, it's obviously part of the Halo Evolutions, so it was originally published by Tor, Simon & Schuster have done an edition since 2019. It's available in pretty much all the formats you think it is, print, ebook and audiobook. Like Aaron mentioned, there are multiple release dates, so the original was 2009 on November 24th. It was split into two volumes the following year, so we have Volume 1 and Volume 2 both came out in November 2010, and then the most recent edition was the 16th of April 2019, um, so that's a one volume edition again. So and I think, do you have this? I have the two individual volumes. I have the two individual volumes as well. I didn't get the original and I didn't pick up the re-release. Yeah, I don't think I, I even knew there was a single one, I a single volume. 
Yeah, I knew there was the single original because they added extra stories into Volume 1 and 2, and the audiobook version is only the original, so there are a couple of stories missing from that. That's the only reason I know about it is because for doing the book clubs and that, I just listen to the audiobook nice and quick, but that's not always the case. I think there's... I can't remember which of the stories are the added extras, but then they're not in it. And they've never done a re-release or a redo of the audiobook. Fair enough. The book length, it's only 35 pages. It's quite short. It's about 15, 52 minute audiobook. Um, the timeline, it's roughly around the 24th of July to August, 2552. So I think around CE roughly that year. It's in thereabouts. The location is a place called... Kurdiad Daris is on the planet Verge. I don't know too much about the planet Verge, to be honest. Anyway, the characters are Black 1, 2, and 3, and 4 even. So there's the four members of Black Team. They're not mentioned by name here, they're just mentioned by their numbers, but obviously their names maybe came later. So we have Margaret 053 is Black 1, Roma 143 Black 2, Otto 031 is Black 3, and Victor 101 is Black 4. But again, they only refer to each, number, to each other as the numbers. The only other real character I've mentioned here is a character called Hopalong, which is pretty cool. This is a drone. This is a Yamami, who is kind of a predominant character in this in the short story. And it's very interesting because I don't think I remember the specifics of this book. Of the, I keep saying book, but of this story. It was quite interesting to read, not knowing where, where it was going. Let's get into it anyway. The plot synopsis, it's pretty quick, short and quick. It's got the four black team members are on planet verge they're going to destroy what's referred to as like a beacon and uh, it's essentially like a refinery that's sucking out helium 3 out of the earth and processing and sending the energy via a big lovely purple beam into space to be collected obviously and, and for the covenant and it's supplying all of the kind of it's a primary fuel supply essentially in this region for the Covenant. So Black Team have kind of come in here to kind of blow this blow this fella up. It's pretty cool and and how and how they kind of go about it. It's short and sweet, like and I found it quite interesting. Like Black Team have like there's diff there's personalities introduced but not really fleshed out and why would you it's a as like it's such a short novel. They're nothing like the Black Team that we know from later from the comics that are kind of child like the black team here are like they're like marines they're like let's go get some I mean, they're very like military kind of jargon they're very close to grey team when you first meet grey team they're very similar which I suppose makes sense yeah I'm like you I have my opinion of black team is entirely tainted by all the later stuff because I have read this before but I forgot all the details the same as you and then all I can think of of black team is this weird very unprofessional slightly incestuous spartan team that i really didn't like and shed no tears over when the didact would eventually massacre them so when i was going back through this and i'm like oh these guys were actually professional once upon a time and like pretty okay as characters so that caught me completely off guard also i forgot that they are black armor is like a specific custom build yeah i had i didn't remember that at all that it was like it's just a black paint job but it's not there's actually it's a specific type of armor they even describe it as like a scope work like prototype still in development it's got like so maybe hinks in it but they only really describe it as like it's very obviously it fades into the background in the darkness and shadows and it has like really good zoom magnification it has like a biofoam uh, function that... I think they all have that though. I don't know. He said when it happens to him, he calls it a like a stupid... What he got? Stupid prototype piece of shit or something like that, he says. Yeah. Because he, he breaks his ankle, but it pins his ankle in the wrong position. So maybe this was like... Maybe it wasn't there all the time, but I, I remember it being in... Described as being in... The later editions of Mjolnir armor, so like maybe they were they were the first iteration. I think in some of the other armors, in if it's around this time period, I think they have ports in the suit, so you can spray a can of biofoam, you know, through the gel layer. That sounds familiar too. They have that a couple of times, although that could be. Uh, I may be thinking of. 
Kurt's armor, no, Kurt's, yeah, Kurt's camouflage armor. Although then again, I think he just had a hole in his gut at that stage, so he just spread the foam straight into the hole. But I, I definitely remember something about like access ports or something. I think those are the only specific things they mentioned. I suppose the, uh, the language translator on the wrist piece is a new addition. That was an interesting thing to, to have and give, yeah. Obviously, this was the early days of the novels and obviously early days of the Covenant. Well, no, it's really early days of the Covenant War, but obviously, like, they had a lot of trouble with the language barrier at the time, especially when you're, look, I'm interfacing with Covenant tech. But, like, the drones obviously didn't even have a language that was easily identifiable anyway. So I thought it was interesting when the characters meet Hop Along that he is a drone with, like, his legs cut off and characterized and he's trying to, he helps communicate to Black 2. Was it Black 1? Black 2? I think it is Black 2. It is. Yeah, and they build a kind of rapport, or she builds a kind of rapport a little bit with, with this drone, and Laren's like, okay, the beacon is being staffed by drones that are treated really badly by the jackals and the hunters that are guarding it. So he wants freedom for these drones. He says he'll show them how to get in and destroy the thing if, you know, they help and that the drones will help. Black Team essentially agreed to this plan because he can show them how to get go down underground and get past the Covenant patrols to like underneath the beacon where they can kind of set up explosives on, on the pylons, which is pretty much what the team do and then they split up and obviously have to take different the different support structures to plant explosives on. And then Black 2 kind of encounters a jackal, kills him, and he has like a cube thing, like a holographic cube that has like a bunch of information on it that she's trying to decipher but can't really figure out, but roughly figures out like okay, it's describing the drones as being unmutable and socially weird or whatever. This is the kind of words that pop up. Purely socialized or something is the the phrase and it has all these what later she realizes aren't pictures of drones they're fucking mug shots and then there's this wonderful moment where there's a battle with a hunter. One hunter gets killed. Hopalong gets a hold of this cube. The other hunter realizes what's happening, goes, oh fuck, and bolts. She chases after the drone trying to kill it because it, it realizes that, and she cops as well, that it's, it's a penal colony. These, are, these drones are like badass motherfuckers. So like the cube deactivates the shock collars that was keeping them all in line. And then the drones go crazy and start murdering everything. And that, that was a pretty cool sequence. I like that whole thing because you've got the drone immediately, or the, the hunter immediately forgets about two and turns around to try and take out the drone. Two's also charging alongside the hunter, trying to shoot the drone. But the drone, yeah, the hunter turns around and legs it. <laughs> but gets taken out and just destroyed by the drones and they make a really good job of showing that drones in large numbers are a force to be reckoned with because I think in Halo you only think of the drones as a pain in the ass you never think of them as a serious threat but for a hunter to go like oh fuck no and run like that's a pretty good sign that they're not maybe just the pest that you think they are and they're all psychotic murderous prison drones because they can't get along in the hive and they've killed their hive mates and all the rest and this is where they end up because they mention in the story that even the Covenant couldn't turn down a free source of labour. It would have been easier to kill these drones but they thought they were cleverer than that. Pretty much the fight kind of ensues. Black 2 has to go rescue Black 3 who was all fucked up because the drones picked him up and dropped him from a height and smashed his ankle like Aaron said she had to rescue him bring him they, they chase through the buildings all the drones are coming after him there's lots of shooting and fighting and stuff going on she pretty much has to like detonate the um the explosives early while the other two members of her team are underground getting like a train up and running and she eventually kind of get uh, makes her way in but it's cool where like she fights hop along she shoots hop along off of black tree and like hop along has no arms or legs now just wings on a body essentially at this thing and he's still going and essentially he has like gravity guns that are kind of they're kind of trying to hold the Spartans in place essentially or pick them up and like when she detonates the beacon one of the armed pilot falls and this big structure with a big huge energy beam blasting off the top just wrecks shop just like totally wipes out half the swarm 
blows up a bunch of buildings, cuts them all down, and obviously collapses into the ground. And she has to, like, dive into that and then bring her teammate with her, get to the train and get out, which all kind of happens. So, but that's another kind of cool sequence. And then it kind of ends with a bit of, a bit of dialogue back and forth. I didn't find that, like, any of the dialogue wasn't cringy. It was short and sweet. It was very kind of, obviously, a tight-knit team, very kind of military-esque that you'd be kind of used to reading any kind of military shooter. It's a good story, to be honest. I, I liked the twist, not seeing it coming myself again. Reading it, I was like, oh, that's cool. It paints, the, it gives you like a lot of backstory to the drones and makes them like a credible threat, which I kind of really liked. And Black Team were interesting. It definitely, it completely caught me off guard that I forgot that Black Team weren't always the way they were. So this disappoints me a little that they will go on to release other stories that make Black Team the weird team. Because like, they're very much like a grey team here. They don't mention that they're, you know, there's no mention that they're this weird team or anything else. They're just a team of Spartans that appear to be slightly more chatty and personal than blue team are. Yeah, the grey team were always kind of like they were the outcasts a little bit. They're, they were the weird ones of the Spartans. And like black team felt like more normal, more close to like not what normal military humans would be like in a you know, a special ops team, you know, as opposed to like the weirdness that is inherent with um, the Spartan 2s, especially like you mentioned, like Blue Team are weird and distant and that's kind of the way they are. And you know, the games and all the stories peg around, you know, telling those stories and they're into how weird they are. Yeah, it, it was, like I said, we said a lot like weird, but it's so strange just how normal they were in the, in this story. Yeah, overall, it's a good story. Like, it's you can't go wrong with it. It's short, it's sweet, it's tight, there's no wasted space, there's nothing boring, cringy, or anything else about it. It's just to the point, full of action, and you're out again. It very much feels like if this would have been a long graphic novel, it has that sort of feel to a good... When we talk about a long graphic novel that we would rather have as a short story, this is what this feels like. You could very easily see this being like a 40-page story in a comic that would bore the tits off you. <laughs> but it's in this nice little short story form and it's good. As I, I think it's 52 minutes on the audiobook. It's just a good little read. Listen. Yeah, very surprised today with how quick and how much I enjoyed it. Yeah, so overall it's good. Yeah, go and listen to it. Don't be put off by the fact it's Black Team like I was before listening to it because <laughs> it's not the Black Team that you remember yet. Yet. Right, will that do us for this one? I think that's uh, to the point. All right, guys, thank you for joining us this week once again. Like we mentioned at the top of the show, you can find every episode of everything we do over at halopodcastevolve.com. It also has links to our Discord server, Facebook group, Patreon page, Xbox Live Club, which may be relevant again for Infinite, and all our other contact information. And once again... A special shout out to all of the patrons for helping support the show and helping us to do all the cool extra stuff that we've been able to do. If you would like to get stuck in with that, go to patreon.com forward slash Halo Podcast Evolved to learn more. And finally, if you want to leave us a voicemail about this episode or any previous episode or anything Halo related, you can do that by calling 205 Evolved. That's 205 386 5833. I promise we listen to all of them, and if you drop one in, we will play it on the live show as well. Right, I have been your host, Aaron, and until next time, Evolved? Evolved! <laughs>